This is video 5a, which is going to talk about Marx's contribution to the end of the classical period. Marx is the last classical economist. His main theoretical work is Capital Volume 1, published in 1867. Marx's economics was a direct interpretation of Ricardo's economics. His economics is actually very mainstream in its construction, and like Ricardo's, his theory is deductive. Marx was influenced additionally by the German philosopher George Hegel. Hegel's method is what we call dialectics. Hegel was interested in the development and improvement of ideas because he believed social behavior was the result of ideas. As such, he's called an idealist. His theory goes like this. Every idea implies its opposite. Idea A implies not A. Thus, A and not A are contradictory. By exploring and trying to resolve this conflict, we discover a new idea from them, idea B. Basically, A is the thesis, not A is the antithesis, and B is the synthesis. And through the application of this method, human ideas change and improve which affects human behavior. Marx, in contrast, was a materialist. He thought material reality, as experienced by human beings, caused both their ideas, the ideas were an effect of material reality, whereas for Hegel, ideas were the cause of material reality, and the resolution of the conflict of material interest in society, which was class conflict for him, resulted in social change. As Marx put it, he found Hegel standing on his head and turned him right side up. The conflict of importance in all societies was class conflict. Now Marx, in his book and his writings, named the market system, and as a resulting, as a result, societies of Western Europe were referred to as capitalism. Capitalism was the latest economic system, and the material conflict was between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, meaning capitalists and laborers. Okay, we're going to talk about Marx for a long time later in the term, but I want to get some of his main contributions out here. You remember the classical economists believed in, in Say's law, supply equals its own demand, and therefore there was no possibility of resources not being fully employed including workers, so there was no possibility of moving away from full employment. Marx, by the time Marx was looking at these capitalist economies, they were large enough to experience periods of crisis, or, or the periods of crisis were more noticeable because of the size. These are what we call depressions. These fluctuations were not apparent to the earlier classical economists because the market system was rather small compared to agriculture. Marx noted full employment did not always occur, and it was clear that capitalist economies were unstable. The second thing Marx did is he explained why the, these crises or depressions were getting more serious with each subsequent crisis. And he argued that because they were getting larger and larger, eventually the capitalist system would collapse. What, the most important thing that we're going to talk about has to do with um, the changes and crises in economics. Marx used the labor theory of value, just like Ricardo and all the other classical economists, but he used it to show that workers were exploited. Okay? Basically, he argued that if workers create all the value and capitalists and landlords receive profits and rents from the workers or as a result of the value created by the workers, then they are expropriating that value from the workers. Therefore, the system is fundamentally unfair and one of exploitation. There's really no way around this conclusion if you use the labor theory of value, as the classical economists after Marx would note. Marx also showed that capitalist production was alienating, that the conditions of employment alienated the worker from their product. They didn't own the product, they just got a paycheck. It alienated the workers from their life. They were basically selling their life in order to work 
to get money to have the rest of their life. And um, it alienated workers from one another because of the hierarchical nature of uh, employment. It, he also noted, in contrast, that capitalist production systems did teach workers how to work together collectively. Marx also showed that capitalism resulted in pathological consumption patterns in the working class. Okay, He called this commodity fetishism. Since workers simply received their pay and did not have the product of their labor, the thing they produced, they would use their pay to try and make their lives more fulfilling and replace that which they felt the loss of through consumption. But of course, this consumption turned out not to be good at fulfilling it, but it did help create mass consumption society as workers went out and bought things um, that they hoped would make them feel better, but actually didn't. From within the framework of classical economics, the way classical economics was done, there was no refuting Marx's conclusions. It helps to be correct. He recommended a change in the system about which he actually wrote very little. And what he did write, most of it wouldn't really upset anyone very much today. You know, he recommended that social societies would have free public education, that they would have a central bank, that divisions between industry and agriculture would have to be resolved by putting agriculture on the same footing production-wise. But there was that thing about the elimination of private property, which was a really big sticking point for many people. Okay. This created a major crisis in classical economics that could not be fixed. And of course, it did not help that all of a sudden these economists were defending a system they had created, which ultimately was a system of exploitation and theft. This was not a palatable conclusion. Um, so how did they go forward with this? Well, the marginalist revolution was very important value in classical economics is from labor, and that puts it in the realm of production. The marginalist revolution makes value subjective value, utility, not something you can never measure, okay? So that gets you away from having to say very much about value, and it also moves it out of the production realm, thus production can't be construed as exploitation. Wegen von Baumbauer, a classical slash Austrian economist writing in this period, wrote a book called Karl Marx and the Close of His System, 1898, where he argued that the labor theory of value is the taproot of Marxism. This would be the focus of the marginalist revolution in mainstream economics, to move theory away from the labor theory of value to the utility theory of value. 